Now in our last session we talked about profiles and permission sets. And we understand that profiles and permission set both are collection of permissions. Profile is a mandatory thing. Every user needs to have a profile. Whereas permission set is an optional thing. Okay. Permission set is optional. Just give me one quick second. One second. Hello. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So uh, we just talked about the profiles and permission sets, and uh, you know we understand that both of them are collection of permissions. Profile being the mandatory thing, every user should have one profile, and permission set is something which is optional. If a user requires some additional permissions which others do not require in his uh, in the same profile, then we'll create a permission set and assign it to the user. Right. Now, but the permissions which we are controlling through profiles and permission sets are things like app permission, object permission, uh, the field uh, permissions, the field level security, these things. All right. Now the point is, the next is data, data access. Let's say. Um, there are four sales uh, people in my uh, company a b c and d okay there are four sales reps all of them have sales profile all these people have sales profile same profile because they all work on the same in the sales team and their profile actually allows them to uh, Access account, opportunities, leads, and uh, account opportunities, leads, and let's say contacts. Okay. So all of them will have access to all these objects. Correct. Now just try and understand the situation. Leads access is available to all of them. Okay, the entire lead object is available. Lead is basically the inquiries that come from the customers. Now, if we are receiving the inquiries from the customers and if this lead object is available to all of them, now there can be a problem. Sometimes, uh, let's say some lead which A was supposed to work on, we might pick, it, pick up that lead just to, you know, just to make some extra incentive, you might pick up his lead also and start calling. That may happen. Right? Or uh, C might pick up B's lead by mistake, intentionally, whatever. Sometimes it can give you problem. Got it? So if everyone is able to see everyone's data, then the problem is that you will have, uh, you can have disputes, confusions, a lot of stuff. Right? So this is not something which will happen in every organization, but some in some organization based on certain requirements, this can be a scenario. Apart from that, there can be certain objects where the data itself is very confidential and you don't want B to C, B to have a look at what data A has stored. All right. So that is the other thing. And in some cases, the company also does not want uh, everyone to see all the data. Let's say I am just working as a sales uh, rep in a company and uh, there are 200 more sales rep in the company. You as a company, will you uh, want me to see all the leads that the company generates or you will just want me to see the leads that uh, I am supposed to work on? Because if you allow me, uh, to see all the leads then definitely you are exposing your complete organization's data to me right so that's a bit of uh, there is a bit, a bit of uh, security concern also there got it so now that is the problem or that is the concern here if there are multiple people who have the same level of access when i say a has a sorry when i say all of them have access to these all objects it means all of them will get to see all the data. But sometimes I don't want A to have a look at B's records. And I don't want B to have a look at C's record. Alright. 
that's where we will work with sharing setting okay what's the sharing setting sharing setting basically allows you to control the sharing of the data you might have seen that in salesforce every record has a record owner hmm? now with sharing setting you can make the data as private or public private means only a record owner will see data or will see in the record public means every one will see the record right so depending on your requirement depending on uh, what kind of object or what kind of data is stored in the object you have the option of making every object in salesforce public or private each object standard custom each object can be marked as private or public if you mark an object as a private object then what will happen only the record owner will get to see the record Let's log in. Right. So uh, the concept is clear. What we are uh, talking about here, we will just see that uh, in the user interface also. But before that, let's understand the concept also. Uh, now, if the data is public, if you make a certain object as public, then everyone in the company gets to see all the records of that object. Simple as that, right? Now, when I say A has access to account, B also has access to account. You have to now go and define the sharing setting for account and say whether the account needs to be public. Uh, sorry, accounts object needs to be public or private. If it is public, then all four of them will get to see all the records. If it is private, then only um, A will get to see the records which he owns we will get to see the records which he owns that's how it is so let's say there are 100 leads in the leads table each one of them has 25 leads I can't see your screen. Is it stuck? Yeah, it's. I mean, I can see your screen, but nothing that you're writing. How about others? Because I'm sharing everything. Can others see what I'm writing on the notepad? Problem with me. Same problem with me. Okay, one second.
The screen is stuck. Hello, uh, since the screen is stuck, so let's wait for uh, you know a couple of minutes for the screen to settle down. Now, uh, the concept wise, uh, do uh, do we have any questions in the meanwhile? You got the concept? What are we trying to do? So it's not just about, you know, uh, allowing someone to create records in an object or not. It's also then going ahead and controlling the record. This is basically we are controlling the access of people at a record level. All right. So will you get to see my data or will I get to see your data? That's also something which administrators can control. Definitely depends on the process that the company follows, the kind of data that the company has in a certain object. But this is also an option, all right? And this is called sharing settings. And uh, <clears throat> now, if we do this kind of, uh, you know, um, this kind of an adjustment, making the data, uh, making the object private or public, there's a small thing that I want you to understand here. Uh, I said you either have to go and make the complete object as private or you have to make the object as public. All right. So this private or public is to be made uh, for the object. Okay. It's to be marked for the object. Now, marking it for an object means all the data under that object will become private or public. So if you mark the object as private, for example, if I mark lead object as private, all the data under my lead object will become private. Got it? So all the data under lead object becomes private. That's the reason why this is called organization wide default. Because this private or public is marked as a default rule for the entire organization. You cannot do this setting for four users that okay make data private for four people and for others let it be public now either it will be public for the entire organization or it will be private for the entire organization and then we will have the option of you know defining certain exceptions that's there but you have the option of marking the data as private or public uh, can you see the screen now is it moving no Still not moving? One second. Let me stop sharing and then start sharing. All right, anyone who is logged in into the developer org? Anyone who is logged in into developer org? Urmi, I'll make you the presenter. Let's do the demonstration on your screen. Okay. Yeah, you will just get a message to share your screen. Right. 
so that's basically about the sharing settings and the uh, terminology that we use for uh, making the object private or public is called organization wide default we also call it owd all right why is it being called so just remember this point that whenever you are making uh, an object as public or private it's going to uh, affect all the user you cannot do it for half of the users and keep it public for half of the users you just have to decide which object you want to make public or which object you want to make private that's what we have to decide okay that's called org by default setting we just see how we can define that in the meanwhile if anyone has any question on this please let me know yeah so we are able to see your screen okay uh, so what you have to do is just go to setup how do we define the org by setting you have to go to setup and under setup you have in the you know in the setup menu you have security controls just go to security controls and under that sharing settings yeah so do you see all the way organization by default there this is what we are talking about so here if you see under organization by default all the objects are listed all your objects including the standard and the uh, custom ones you have the option to go ahead and make these objects private or public if you click on the edit button there you will see that you will have the option of making them private or public so whichever object you want to make private you will make it private which object you want to keep it as public you can make it public or keep it as public got it see you have the option of drop uh, the drop downs to make the data as private or public all right so that's basically about our org wide default setting so depending on your requirement you will make uh, the objects private or public now uh, as i just told you that you have to make the data private or public for the entire organization because in the table if i am making the entire table as private then definitely the entire data in that table is getting affected so all the users will get affected right but sometimes it may happen that you have a requirement of sometimes you might have a requirement of uh, you know or you you might have certain exceptions let me put it this way you made the data private for everyone let's say we all are working in the sales team data is private no one gets to see the other person's data you just get to see your data i get to see my data in that case right now we just have a small requirement that uh, i will be uh, you know going on a leave of two weeks and uh, urmi will need to uh, look after my records okay but because it's private she cannot see my data the company wants urmi to take care of my accounts and leads for two weeks because i am actually going to be on leave right this is an exception situation right this is where we have to go and define an exception to define an exception we have the option of for defining an exception we have the option of defining sharing rules there is one more thing called sharing rules so first of all you define owd and then you define the sharing rules sharing rules can be used for defining exceptions to the owds so just click on cancel on this yeah now when you come to this sharing settings Uh, scroll down a little first thing that you see is or by default you have all the tables listed scroll down after or by default you have the sharing rules 
Hold down a little further. Yes. Do you see the sharing rules? There is lead sharing rule, account sharing rule, opportunity. So for every object, basically, we again have the sharing rules available. Got it? So uh, that's the concept. Now I have the sharing rule for every object. What is the sharing rule? Sharing rule will be used for defining exceptions to the OWD. Now, just a simple logic. Sharing rule will come into picture only if OWD is uh, private. Only if you make an object private, then only you need sharing rule, right? If it is public, anyhow, everyone is able to see everyone's data. So there you can, you don't need sharing rule. Got it? So you will need sharing rule only if you have uh, made changes uh, in the OWD settings of a certain object and made the object private. Right? You need a special permission to access something only if that something is private. Right? You don't need a special permission to access something which is public. Right? So there is a, a public garden. You don't need a permission to get into that. But if it is some office, someone owns it, you want to enter that, you need a special permission. Got it? So that's the concept here. So till that time, if you see that your OWD is public, then you don't need the sharing rule. If OWD is private and you want to define an exception, then you need sharing rule. Got it? So let's say we made uh, leads as private, for example. Then you can go and define lead sharing rule in case you want to define a certain exception on the sharing uh, on the OWD. So just go to lead sharing rule new. Click on that button. Okay, and this is where you have to define that exception. Now, before you start uh, defining the sharing rule, just read uh, you know the three lines which are written. Uh, just at the top. Use sharing rules to make automatic exceptions to the OWD. That's what we uh, you know, just discussed. So use your sharing rules to make automatic exceptions to the OWD. If you have defined OWD, you use sharing rules to make the exceptions. Uh, leave the second line. Uh, you will understand this a little later. Third line is important. You can use sharing rule only to grant wider access to data and not to restrict access. Okay, so you can use these sharing rules only to give access to access to someone. You cannot use a sharing rule to control the access or to restrict the access. So by default, if I have access to see, you know, for example, uh, account object, uh, if we keep it public, everyone can see that data. You cannot go and define a sharing rule to uh, restrict my access to account object. No. Got it? So if something is public, everyone can see data. I will also get to see data. But if something is private, no one can see data. I want to see data. You can use a sharing rule to grant an access to me on that. Got it? So now just put a label and a name for the sharing rule. Uh, we can just put whatever label and name. Make it S1. The same rule name. All right. What is the rule type? What data you want to share? Basically, sharing rule. Why are we defining? Because you want to share some data with someone, right? So, based on what criteria you want to share the data that you have to define, whether you want to share the data based on record owner or based on some other criteria, right? Based on record owner means. Uh, Pick a record owner that uh, you know share the data of Jeet with frame. So that's basically the uh, record owner criteria. Based on other criteria can be any other criteria. Let's say uh, share all the data of Australia with Jeet or share all the data with uh, from a certain industry with uh, Jeet. So that's how it is. Right. So if you have some other criteria, you should select based on criteria. If you just want to share the data based on a record owner, then you should just pick based on record owner, right? Now you have to select which records to be shared, whose records to be shared and with whom. Step three is whose records need to be shared. Step four is with whom you want to share these records, got it? 
so right now here there is an option see your users are not listed here if you click on the you know go to the step 3 and click on the drop down when you try to choose the uh, whose records need to be shared you don't find the users option here here you have public groups and roles all right so you can pick either the public group or the role here what is public group public group can be group of users role is basically the role hierarchy of the user so these options are available so let's go to that uh, step 3 public groups drop down click on that public groups drop down yes. can you click on that drop down public groups click on it um it's like you see it no can you guys the public see group. Public groups as public groups, roles, roles and subordinates. No, somehow it is, I, I can see. Can uh, other see it? Yeah, we are not able to see it, surprising. That's what I was thinking. No. I don't know what's wrong, man. One second. You just do one thing. Uh, you select uh, role roles from the drop down. The roles. Yeah, select the roles from the drop down. Yeah. And now select any particular role here. Let's say CFO. Right. So now you are defining that you want to share cfo's data whose data are you you know going to share here you're going to share the data of cfo with whom so that's the step four so go and define roles there and make it cmo or coo whatever see so you're kind of allowing the sharing role to share the data of CFO with COO. By default, it was private. So COO did not have access, whoever is there in that particular position. So uh, instead of COO or and CFO, you will have other roles also available in a company. So let's say uh, sales executive for Western region. Okay, you know, someone's role is uh, sales executive for Western region. And the other person is sales executive for Eastern region. Now this guy from the Western region is not going to be available or he needs some help from the other person who heads the eastern region, you can just go ahead and share the data like this. So this is an exception. And this is going to be used only when your data has been made private using OWD. Got it? So this is how your sharing settings is going to work. Let me know if you have any questions or doubt here. Got it. So in the sharing rule, what are we doing? We are just defining the name of the rule. We are saying whose data needs to be shared with whom. That's it. Nothing else. And this will come into picture only if you have made the data private. Again, uh, you know, repeating the same thing because you are giving additional access. If the data is already public, then you don't need to give additional access to anyone because everyone anyhow has the access to all the data. 
So just keep this thing very, very clear in mind. First thing to get into, just one quick second. First thing to get into sharing rule, you must have made some object as private. Correct? You will make the object private under OWD only if your company has that kind of requirement where they want only the record owners to see the data. So we, we have to be very clear on the concept part. Fine. I understand that we are talking about two, three concepts and it becomes difficult for you to uh, keep everything in mind, but just keep things very simple. There are different objects. Is there an object? Your first question should be, is there an object where the company wants the data to be private, only the owner to see the data? Yes or no, that's the first thing. If there is an object, then you need OWD. If the company is absolutely fine with keeping all the data public, let it be. So you don't even need to get into sharing settings. Now, once you have made the data private, after that, if you have a requirement of giving some additional permissions or some uh, you know, uh, temporary permissions to some people, then you need a sharing rule. Otherwise, you are pretty fine. You don't need the sharing rule. Correct? Yep. Someone had a question. Uh, we can uh, share the private data only one, uh, one or uh, maybe person. No, you can share it with anyone. How many people you want? Like okay. my data, I can, you know, uh, if the company wants uh, three people to see my data, they can actually uh, share it with three people. That's not a problem. In that case, okay. uh, you have to create a public group. So see, now it is role to role. You should create a public group, put all those three people in that group. Okay, there's this option of creating a public group. And here in step four, where you say share with, there you should select that group. Okay. Got it? So that's how it is. So you can share it or you can define multiple sharing rules also. So that is. All right. Okay. So uh, let's just come back to my screen. Let's try if uh, my screen sharing is working a little now or not. Do you guys see my screen now? Yes, it is. Now, do you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, uh, we have talked about making the data private, public, all this stuff, right? But there will be certain users who need access to everyone's data. No matter you have made the data private or public or what, certain users will still need access to all the data like system administrator. I was just talking about making a certain object as private and lead object or something. And I said that it's going to be applicable on the entire organization. It's org wide setting. But there are certain users who need still need to access all the data of all the objects or you know of certain object like a system administrator. like a reporting analyst, like a, maybe a testing analyst, um, all right. or someone in you know this top, top senior level management. Okay. So there can be certain people who need to have still have access even if you make the data private they still need to have access to the data. Got it? So uh, there will be a few users who need to be kept out of this OWD. Got it? So if the data is completely made private and even the system administrator does not see it, then he will not be able to uh, do the data management, imports, updates, these things he will not be able to do if he doesn't see it. Or he will not be able to perform any other operation which is required. Right. The same way if uh, the reporting guy does not see everyone's data, then how will he generate a report for everyone? That is right. Senior management people might want to see all the data. Right? 
so for that there is you know to keep these users or any user out of the owd there are certain permissions which are called admin permissions okay. there is an admin permission called view all and there is an admin permission called modify all okay we saw this view all and modify all in the profile if anyone remembers in the profile if you uh, go and see an object there was a read create edit delete and beside that there was view all and modify all right so that view all and modify all is what basically controls whether you will have access to all the data on a certain object or not okay so uh, Okay, can you just again uh, share your screen and go to uh, the system admin profile? Yeah, let's go to the profile. No, no, you have to go to profiles first, and then under that you will have to go to the system administrator. It's the last one. Next, go ahead, click on the next. click on edit on the top click on edit and scroll down to the object permission okay. click on edit and then scroll down to the object permissions Custom object permissions? Anyone, uh, standard object, custom object. See, <clears throat> do you see this thing here? In the object permission, you have read, create, edit, delete, and beside that, you have view all and modify all permissions, right? This is data admin permission. Okay, so if someone has this permission in his profile, that person will not get affected by the OWD. All right. So people who you think uh, should not be restricted by the OWD being made private, then you should give them the view all modify all permission for that particular object. So view all permission for a certain object like a view all permission for project object means the user of this profile will be able to see all projects. View all means he will be able to see all the projects in the project object. No matter what is the OWD setting for project, whether project is private or public, doesn't matter to this person. He will have. So this is a special permission. Modify all permission allows him to edit all the permission, you know, projects, edit and delete. Okay. So no matter what is the uh, OWD, the user of this profile will have the access to edit or delete all the profiles. Uh, sorry, all the projects or whichever object. So view all permission on lead object will mean you will get to see all the leads. Uh, view, modify all permission on the lead object means you will be able to edit or delete all the leads. Got it. So uh, you know as I was saying that certain users like system administrators and uh, the senior management, they might be uh, you know sometimes you will have the requirement of keeping them out of the OWD. Then you just have to go and give this additional permission to them. That's it. 
nothing else needs to be done clear okay so that's about our uh, profiles permission sets and then we have talked about sharing settings today under sharing settings there are two things that we uh, just discussed organization by defaults and sharing rules organization by default if it is made private then you can use sharing rule to define exceptions to the organization by default all right and after that we talked about admin permissions so people who need to be kept out of the owd thing should be given these admin level permission view all modify all so by default if you see system administrator profile already has view all modify all on all the objects so now no matter which object you go and make it private system administrator will anyone with a system admin profile will still have the access to all those objects and all the records in the objects got it now there is one more thing that we need to uh, look into just uh, go to manage users there is one more thing called a role we have talked about all these things there is one more concept small concept a role what is role role is basically used for defining the hierarchy in the company okay and it can be useful in some cases for defining approval processes and all that stuff uh it's pretty simple defining the role is pretty simple it's just about defining the hierarchy so that salesforce can understand that who reports to whom that kind of thing right what is the actually your org structure hierarchy in your company and it is something which is not again required this is not mandatory but if you feel that you have a requirement of uh, controlling things through hierarchy then you should uh, implement the rules also so just go to set up roles and the manage users you can go to roles and under that you can click on set up roles the set up roles will allow you to set up the hierarchy for your company there's a default hierarchy which salesforce has given just expand that ceo thing yes. see this is the default hierarchy they have given you can always make changes to this hierarchy if you do not need a certain role if you don't have a cfo just go and uh, you see there is a delete option beside everything so whichever role you don't need you can delete that you have the option of adding the roles add role at any point right so this way you can actually you know build your own uh, com your company uh, hierarchy tree right and then the role can be assigned to the user the same way profile is assigned to the user role can be assigned to the user and if once you set up the role hierarchy for your company and assign these roles to the users salesforce will have a clear understanding that who is working under whom and all that stuff got it like we did in sharing settings or sharing rule also share the data of this particular role with this role so this is again an option which is available to you this is not required but till the time your company does not want to control things based on hierarchy it's absolutely fine to not have any rules like currently we do not have on your developer role got it okay so that's what uh, we are going to discuss today let me know if anyone has any question or doubt from what we have discussed